welcome to my channel or welcome back loyal viewers i'm carrie the nosy housefrau and as you can see i may have gone a little too far with the makeup today but you can blame jake yonsei he's got me binge watching rupaul's drag race and i'm loving it and it's had an influence on how extra i'm feeling so i was a little heavy-handed but having fun and now on to tonight's tea topic i got my notes handy because i took notes again this is part three the big finale, I know you're sad to see it go, but we're going to discuss Keemstar's interview with Onision. In for a penny, in for a pound. Let's do this. Okay, so part three wasn't exactly more of the same. In this one, Keemstar, although it's about the same length of time, he really allowed Onision to take over even more, which I'll get to in detail. But uh, he starts off saying... You know, you were trying to expose Shane for inappropriateness, and now do you feel that that's somehow ironic? In other words, you know, you tried you tried making him look bad and making him look like a problem, and now people are saying these exact things about you. And Onision just said, well, I will say what comes around goes around. No questions for him on that. No request to expound. What do you mean? Are you saying you're paying for it? None of that. He just can, lets him go on and say... Um, so, you know, you said, he said this instantly allows Onision to hijack the interview and turn it around so that he is obnoxiously asking Keemstar these questions that he himself already knows the answers to, that Keemstar knows the answers to. He starts saying, what exactly did Shane Dawson say? And he says, tell me what he said, even though he knows what he said because he's made videos about it. And Keemstar is like, well, I think he said a lot of things. I think he said this. And he, and then there's a long pause. And he see on laughs and says, and what did the co-host say? What did his co-host say to him? Like suddenly he's talking to Keemstar like he's a, Odysseon is a third grade teacher. <laughs> and he's got to, got to extract this information like he's doing a mock trial. And Keemstar somehow is in the witness box. Keemstar is the interviewer. He never should have allowed this. He should have, you know, said, listen, you know as well as I do what was said. If you want to recount it yourself, you can. I'm not going to go over every single thing with you. Don't let him do that to you. Don't let him steamroll you in your own interview. I found that irritating. Um, and then, of course, Keemstar answers him and says, well, the co-host said you shouldn't say that. Onision's like, right, you shouldn't say that or you'll go to jail. But he kept saying it. Onision is taking every single thing that happened out of context. Keemstar's not calling him on it. But to his credit, Keemstar did relent and say, but can't this be flipped on you? Onision then goes into how everyone agreed with him that Shane was this terrible person. Everyone agreed with him, but once Shane made a video saying he wasn't that way, everybody believed it. And of course, I'm tempering my language, but once Oni uh, Shane said, I'm not that way, everyone believed it, according to Onision. And everybody, in his words, was on board with him. Now, right there, that's a claim that Keemstar should be questioning, because we are talking about literally millions of people. Millions of people follow Shane Dawson. So how are you going to say what everyone feels that's a blanket statement on a small scale i could put you in a room with 50 people and ask you what are all of these people thinking and you're going to say just like everyone would they're probably thinking different things so imagine that on a much larger scale but onision has the arrogance to say everyone was on board half the time when he's talking i i, I personally can say no that wasn't me no nope, not me who you talk you know, there, there's no variables. And even if it were true, if everyone agreed with him, that's still a fallacious argument. That's called argument ad populum. That's saying that because everybody thinks it, it must be true. Now, I alluded to that exact thing in a previous video. Nobody said anything to me about it. But in retrospect, I could have been more clear when I say, I see so much smoke, there has to be fire. That doesn't mean that I think people accusing you means that it's true. If everybody in the world accuses Onision of something, that doesn't make it true. What makes it true, what makes it seem true, is this constant piling up of more and more and more evidence, circumstantial or otherwise. You can build a case on a ton of circumstantial evidence because there is this belief that when there is that much smoke, there's probably fire. And that has proven to be true in many cases. And that's why you can make a case with circumstantial evidence. Getting back to that, not to, to put too fine a point on it, 
there is this idea from Greg that everyone was on board with him. And Keemstar never says anything about that. Okay, let that one go. And then at least he says, you know, how do you feel? It's flipped on you. But the weirdest thing in this whole interview was that for Onision, all roads led to Sarah, the woman he calls the Me Too movement fraud. Everything asked of him turned to Sarah. At one point when it starts out, Keemstar is clearly trying to put the focus on the Shane thing. But they never wrap that up and really wade through that very much because they are instantly talking about Sarah again. And he is going on a tirade. In any other time, he's just monotone talking about everything. But then, boom, the Sarah thing sets him off and he starts ranting about what she's trying to do to Kai, etc. And it, there was no reining that in. But when he did change the, the conversation to Sarah, Keemstar once again went where Onision led him and said, uh, well, then I have to ask you, um, you know, what about these uh, pictures sent to her and everything? And Onision starts saying, prove it, prove it. Pictures don't prove anything. This was to me bizarre that Keemstar never said it. I almost felt like he wasn't listening to him very much because Onision made a point twice and when he made it at the end, Keemstar acted like it was the first time he had heard it, which I will get to put a mental tab on that. So Onision says that these pictures cannot have been proven to have been, to, been sent to Sarah. Now when you bring up Sarah, sorry when Onision does, cause you won't have to, he'll bring her up. You're not going to get a word in because he just da, 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 rapid fires all of these things about how horrible she is. This girl that was a minor when he brought her into her, his home, he is now fighting with as a grown man and blaming her for everything, right? So he's talking about how she is victimizing Kai, how all this happened because she's rejected, she's BPD, all of these things. And the weirdest thing was that he said this picture that was not sexual at all. Hello, County Monet, how are you? Uh, this picture that was not sexual at all, somebody just forgot to crop out the bottom, uh, was, was on, you don't know that that was on her phone. I mean, if she has it, she can prove it. You're perfectly within your rights to say, prove it fine. But how back up the bus, how is Keemstar just going to let him go blow right past saying it wasn't a sexual picture because somebody just forgot to crop out the bottom. That's actually worse than him saying he should not have to pay any consequences because he just made the mistake of doxing someone. And that should have come up today too, because Onision in this conversation says you get all of the dumbest people that you do interviews going, Oh, I made a mistake. I made a mistake. You know, and he's like alluding to the fact that it, you shouldn't have done it. You shouldn't have made this mistake. Meanwhile, he shouldn't get let off of the platform for <laughs> doxing someone because it was a mistake. So he has a very different standard for himself clearly and contradicted himself between these two interviews. I figured it out over the course of a couple of days. If it's happening in the same sitting, how did Keemstar not pick up on that, on the hypocrisy of that? Because he's not really listening. That's what I think. In one of his Sarah tirades where he just completely sees red and disengages and can only rant rapid firing about Sarah, it's like, Greg's not here, Mrs. Torrance. He starts saying that what's going to happen when nothing happens? That's what he said. All of these people are going to be embarrassed. And what's going to happen when nothing happens? Well, nothing has happened. That's You're looking at what happens when nothing's happened. People don't like you. But regardless of you not getting arrested or paying any consequences, that doesn't matter. Because with Greg, something will always happen. I've said before, and I'll say again, I don't think Onision will be going to prison for this. You know, with him, something always does happen. But at least in this instance, uh, he has been too clever and has not technically broken any laws and, and will not be arrested. So I found it particularly ridiculous when he was making it sound like the law was coming for Chris Hansen. He was really trying. You remember what he did with the 911 call, making it sound so much worse than it was? Anytime he wants to sway something in his favor, he exaggerates and he's not even embarrassed about how transparent it looks. Did the same thing with Shane, did the same thing with Sarah, anybody that he tries to gaslight. He always makes it look like it's is so much in his favor. And in this case, he was saying Chris Hansen was within 50 feet of his trespassing sign. Chris Hansen, a journalist who was there for, to, to attempt to get an interview, which Onision knew. Uh, and I think he did abuse the 911 system with that call, by the way. So he's saying that Chris is going to have to answer for that. He's making it sound like the law is after him for it. And like that you'd think the paddy wagon was coming any minute and that Chris Hansen was going to be locked up. 
because he was within 50 feet of Onision's trespassing sign. Not even embarrassed. Keemstar then attempts to go in hard on Onision and say, I have always disagreed with you on this, that you had young underage girls send you their pictures so you could critique their bodies, etc. And Onision said, whoa, send? No. Post on a public forum that was 18 and older only. And Keemstar says, I know you're not stupid. You had to know some of these girls would be underage. To which Onision replies, hence the 18 and older only on there. Onision had said flat out that underage girls never crossed my mind. And yet they crossed your path because we all saw it. You'd have to be obtuse to not know that some of those girls were about 15 at best. I don't care what the site says. You're supposed to use your own good judgment that you're supposed to have to be able to discern between younger and older. And because of all of this discussion about younger and older, the obvious thing never gets brought up. How disgusting is it that you had an event like that? That you had a platform where you used to judge women's bodies. And what a perfect hunting ground for this guy, right? It certainly does nothing to allay any concerns that he might be the P-word. Because it's the perfect place to find people with problems. Calling old girls with low self-esteem. We found somebody who wants you to worship him and put all your trust in him. And then the next thing you know, you're the next guest in their house that they make jokes with. After telling Onision that he had him on so he could tell his side of the story that nobody else was letting him tell, <laughs> he then says to Onision, do you have anything that you'd like to say to wrap this up? And I thought that was a good question. Is there anything you would like your haters to know that you feel they've got wrong, basically, is how he put it. Very good opportunity, right, for Onision to address that. And Onision just sat there with nothing to say. <laughs> and then laughed. It was really awkward. It was like what you would call um, a, a weird response, inappropriate response, I think is the actual psych term for it. But then he says, um, you know, just what comes around goes around. You know, you either die a hero or you live long enough to become the villain. Uh, he, starts, he starts just rattling off platitudes. Anybody got a fortune cookie? Muhammad just came off the mountain and he's running out of gems for us. Thank goodness for Onision. And Onision says, you know, when he, this time, when he says what comes around goes around, that's when Keemstar seems to hear it and says, whoa, whoa, did I just hear you take responsibility? And Onision, they start talking over each other. Whoa, there's excitement. Onision's, oh, 100%, totally, I take responsibility. He says, I used to be like those drama channels. I used to be stupid, and I would make uh, social repose videos for views, etc. And Keemstar is acting like he's all woke. What I think Keem is missing is that this is part of the Onision cycle. He does this from time to time, all the time. He did it before his worst videos about Eugenia Cooney. He would have an apology every other week about how he wasn't going to be that guy anymore. And then all of a sudden he was woke and transcendental before he did it all over again even worse. And one of the more poignant final remarks that Onision made was, nobody's perfect. Truer words were never said. That one, that one really resonates. I'm gonna, I'm gonna write that down. I think I'm gonna make a refrigerator magnet out of clay, you know, so like I could see it every day, because that one, it really changed my perspective a lot. No one is perfect, Onision, Greg, James, Jingleheimer, Schmidt, but some of us are a lot better than others when it comes to how we live our lives. On the other hand, you know what? Tomorrow's another day. We should start a writing group. Well, if you've watched this far, I so appreciate you. I'm going to take a quick break and get right into my Corey Feldman video. If I don't finish that by tonight, it's only 8 o'clock my time here on uh, Eastern Pacific. And uh, if it's not up tonight, it will be up tomorrow morning, the latest by noon Eastern Pacific time. I also have a regular Patreon and a VIP Patreon going up tomorrow night as well. Thank you very much for all of your support, patron saints of Patreon. As you know, County Monet has been visiting me every day as soon as I go live. So you are appreciated more than ever. So thank you and everyone. Until next time, Housefrau out. Okay.